जय श्री सोन जय श्री कृष्ण जय सिया राम जय माता जी हर हर महादेव वेलकम टू द सेकेंड एपिसोड ऑफ द वचनाम सीरीज टूडे विल बी कवरिंग गदरा प्रथम नंबर टू Before we start the Vachanamrat reading today we will cover a bit more about the actual layout of the Vachanamrat. Now many of us when we are reading this we will realize that there is an opening paragraph. Now that opening paragraph is always consistent across every single chapter. Now many will question why is this the case? Now this opening paragraph is known as the Dhyan Bhag. Now this meditation phase will describe where Maharaj is located, what time it is, uh, where he is sitting, what he is wearing and who is in front of him. Now this gives an initial snapshot of where Maharaj is. Now many of us will think, why do we have to read this? This is so boring. But however, Santos always state that this is the secret key to understanding all the Vachanamrats. That's it. You heard that right. If we can focus on this opening paragraph, then we will understand the whole Vachanamrat. By doing Dhyan upon Maharaj's Murti, it will unleash all the wisdom within the Vachanamrat. Furthermore, Santos have given us a special template in terms of how to follow this Dhyan Bhag. Now, when the vakta when the orator is reading the vachanamrat we have to transport ourselves to that current location where maharaj is seated so when the opening paragraph starts we have to realize that we are no longer within this body we are no longer sitting in india or london or usa or wherever we are we have to transport ourselves within the vachanamrat we have to transport ourselves within the allocated town where this vachanamrat was read so it could be gadpur could be vartha and so on so forth and then we have to realize that we are sitting within the sabha sitting on the left of us is muktanand swami premanand swami gopalan swami all these great santos and sitting to the right of us is dada kachar apple kachar and all these great devotees and the same goes for the ladies as well we have to realize that we are in the divine sabha where there's jivuba laduba and gangaba and when we truly realize that we are within the divine akshadhamni sabha only then will we truly be able to attain the divine wisdom from the vachanamrat now let's have a practice as we start with the opening dhyan bhag swami narayan hare swami narayan hare in the samvat year 1876 on the night of makshar sud 5 shiji mart had come to the residential hall of the sadhus in dada kachar darbar in gadra he was dressed entirely in white clothes At that time a sabha of sadhus as well as hari bhaktos from various places had gathered before him Are we there yet have we transported ourselves in Gadpurgam are we sitting amongst the divine akshadhamni sabha if not go and rewind this and try again Now let's continue with the vachanamrat and let's go to the first question Thereupon mayarampat Ask Sri Ji Maharaj. O oh Maharaj, please describe the characteristics of the three levels of vairagya: uttam, madhyam, and kanishta. Now, the first question that will naturally come to our mind is, what is vairagya? Now, in simple terms, vairagya means the practice of detachment. Now, to truly understand this on a, a practical basis. we have to realize that on a day to day basis within our lives we are constantly chasing after temporary pleasures now that can be the food which we eat it could be the things which we watch on telly it could be the possessions which we have and naturally we are always hoping that these pleasures will last forever and ever however that is never the case we always put ourselves within a vicious circle we invest our time and energy and full dedication to try and seek out materialistic pleasures which will try and give us full happiness but in the end they will always fail us and then naturally we get upset and then the vicious circle starts all over again and this is where vairagya helps us to find true happiness which is always residing within ourselves There is a big difference between vairagya 
and tyag vairagya is not teaching us to renounce everything in our lives goodbye phone goodbye house goodbye family goodbye world i'm now going to the forest and going to do tap no that is not the case in fact vairagya is teaching us the path of how to live a happy life within this world and where we are not getting attached to these materialistic pleasures it saves us from all the highs and lows of this pain and miseries now let's go and hear what shiji maharaj says to this answer shiji maharaj then explain one who has uttam vairagya engages in worldly activities either by the agna of bhagwan or as a result of his responsibilities but like janak raja he is not affected by those worldly activities he may indulge in the most alluring of the five senses but those wishes are unable to entice him thus his tyag remains undiminished moreover he constantly remains in the contact with sadhus and shastras and remains in the seva of bhagwan even if he were to come across difficult times places and scenarios his understanding would not diminish such a person is said to possess uttam vairagya now to understand what uttam vairagya is we truly have to understand who king janak raja was now janak raja was the great king of mithila nagri and as we know from the ramayan he was also the father of sita ji Now Janak Raja was such a great devotee of Bhagwan so much so that Vyas Bhagwan sent his own son Shukmuni all the way to Mithila Nagri and find true refuge within Janak Raja and make him his own guru Now naturally Shukmuni who was a tyagi couldn't truly grasp the fact that why his father who is Bhagwan himself was sending him to Mithila Nagri to a king of all people to be his guru but nonetheless shukdev muni listened to his father and carried on his journey to mithila nagri as soon as shukdev muni placed his foot within the kingdom he was surrounded by great palaces golden chariots and beautiful people all around him within him he began to question why am i truly here but nonetheless he followed his father's agna and went straight to the doors of Janak Raja and there Janak Raja was seated on a great golden throne and naturally all these doubts came flooding through within the mind of Shukmuni saying how can this king who is sitting on these materialistic pleasurely goods can become my guru i have given everything up and yet my father wants him to become my guru this will never be the case what can he offer me which i do not have already and there janak raja began smiling as he could read all the different emotions within the face of shukmuni and then he smiled and said please enter shukmuni i understand that you have been sent here to become my shishya my disciple however it is not that easy to become my disciple you must pass a series of tests to become my shishya now please listen carefully as you can see in front of you there's a cup of oil fill right to the top you must place that upon your head and not a single drop of oil should fall on the floor now what you must do is you have to go to every single corner within this palace and i want you to write down every single thing which you can see now within several hours Shukmuni managed to do this whole task and without spilling a single amount of oil. And thereafter he came back to Janak Raja and replied and said, "O oh, great king, I have done this task of yours." And there Janak Raja was very happy and smiled and asked, "How could you observe every room in such detail when you had a full cup of oil on your head?" Thereupon Shukmuni answered, I observed every room but my focus was always on the cup. And then Janak Raja started laughing. And there Shukmuni was confused and said, "I don't understand. Why are you laughing?" Then Janak Raja said, "The same task which you have carried out in several hours is the very task which I do throughout my whole life. Though I live in this world performing my duties as a king, husband, father, I always keep my focus 
on the higher reality which is parmatma janakaraja further said i have all these responsibilities but none of it's mine i am just the administrator of this kingdom on behalf of a higher king and that higher king is bhagwan himself i am only a servant in this kingdom of bhagwan and that's why people call me videhi where i am liberated while still living now hopefully this erases all the doubts which you had and straight away shukmuni fell at the feet of janak raja and he realized his own mistakes and he truly understood why his father had sent him all the way to mithila nagri as he realized that janak raja was truly worthy to be his guru in the same way shri maharaj is stating that this is the virtues and the qualities one should have in order to have the highest quality of vairagya now let's carry on to the second 